This is why lure fishing so consumes me. It's so easy and efficient to go fishing. We're targeting a bass spot later on and we had a couple of hours to kill. We haven't got to go and collect bait. All we're going to do is grab some different lures and we've come ras fishing. And I really, really want to try something a little bit different, okay? I'd usually use a Texas rig for ras, as in that cone lead is moving on the leader down to the lure. That's your kind of, with a weedless hook, that's your, I don't want to say traditional, that's what we tend to use for ras fishing. But I think these balls clip on leads, where you just clip it onto the eye of the hook, the weedless hook, and then put the lure on, I think they'll make life even easier again. Carry less gear, little box of weights, few hooks, few lures, and ras fishing obviously is very, very much about snag city, little bit of depth. Ireland, I tend to fish deeper water for ras in Ireland than I would at home. I don't know why, but you want snaggy as you like, rock edges. They love to feed that kind of zone beneath, when you've got deeper water like this, that kind of zone beneath your feet. And look, I love it. You know, you could have a kip, you could waste your life and have a kip, or you could, for a couple of hours, grab some lures and go and catch some rats. I've moved around the corner to try and get away from that side swell. I don't like too much that kind of lateral movement for Ras. And this goes right down like this off here. Okay, I've got the wind in my face, so it makes it feel a bit awkward, but it's fine. I've got one of those 15 gram, you know, balls clip on weights on the hook. And it really helps anchor me to the bottom and bump this lure. I really like it set up like this. This is really efficient to work. Even that wind pumping in my face. Yeah. Oh. You see, I like fishing rod tip up for ras, but because the wind's right in my face, I fish rod tip down, but I don't like it as much. I'll try and keep the line under the wind a bit. They're here because I just dropped one. I had it on and it came off. Every time you come in, whatever lure you're using, just check that hook point's buried away. You want to have the least amount to snag possible. So obviously you're fishing on the bottom. Yep. <laughs> you had a look at the size of that guy. I tell you what, that took a bit of catching. That's the first ras, it's only a babby. Yo. On one of those Ned Salamander soft plastics, the Savage Gear ones, first drop. A barbless hook, straight out. But now I've added more weight, a lot more weight on my Texas rig to counteract the wind and the swell. And I, I can actually properly feel what's going on now. So now I feel confident again. The confidence is flowing like gold from a Saudi Arabian bank account. It's called, oh, there we go, bite now. Yeah. Yo, oh, I love it. Oh, That's a different color ras again. Every ras you catch is a different color. I'll tell you what, I'm all over that lure. 
lift on a short rod like that. Whew. Bit better. I think I found a little honey hole. They're such honest fish. I kind of feel you do it right. You got a good chance. Those lips, I love them. Thank you very much, fish. I sound like a moaning angler, but it's quite hard to maintain contact with when you've got wind and swell on the bottom like this. You know what, my, I was using that ball's clip on, which I, it worked because I dropped the fish, but I need a heavier weight than the 15 grams. So, so I put a couple of Texas, you know, cone weights on. I've got a total of about, I uh, see, I knew how to hit. Got a total of about 26 grams on, which is kind of heavy for rassing, but you've got to be adaptable just to take account of the situation. I don't know where a rass would ever see a salamander, but it works. I never doubted it for a second. I just, I took one surreptitious glance at this lure and knew straight away it was going to work. And if you believe that, then you believe the earth is flat. Oh, I just got hit on the retrieve then. Oh, I got smacked. There's a rat officer following me up. I was retrieving the cast again. Boom, I don't know if you saw the rod tip. It could have been Apollo, to be fair. The rats will follow it up. Yep. Jesus, man. That's a little puppy, but they're on the feed. I'll tell you what, that salad, I'd... I know I keep banging on about it, but this Ned Salamander in watermelon red, look, I like watermelon red for wrasse anyway, it's brilliant. But this is, this is deadly. I guess the wrasse, I don't know. It obviously turns them on somehow, something. Ooh, we like this, we like this. This tries so hard to get back in the bottom. I tell you, I'm liking these lures. Oh, they're such pretty fish. Look at this. Barbless hook. Out we come. Boom. Casting in there because I get to cover all the ground back to me in tight. Oh, a bite then. It's got hit then. Come on, come on, come on. I'll stop my lure, I'm just shaking it. There we go, there we go. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Try and leave the fish on. Oh, come on, Ras. Come back, come back, come back. Leave it in place, just shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it. So that I can tease that fish on. Mm. 
fine. That fish will hit again, you know, whether it's small or big. I don't know whether rats are inquisitive or aggressive or both. But this lure fish, I, since I first, thanks to a couple of lads in Jersey, mainly Keith and Kevin White over in Jersey, since they kind of really decoded the fact that wrasse were very much a lure species, I can't see the point in bait fishing for wrasse. What's the, you know, I've got to collect bait, I've got to keep bait, bunch of lures, bunch of hooks, bunch of leads, and go. And this, you cover so much ground with the lures. I've all, from day one, I've sort of getting to grips with it. I'm utterly convinced you catch more and you catch bigger, you're covering more ground. You know, if the theory goes that rats are territorial, you've got more chance of covering more territory. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. It's quite awkward, this swell, but... With that heavier Texas rig, I'd never usually use this much weight on a ras rig. But I've got to match the conditions, I've got to match the depth, the wind, the swell, and I've got all the feel I need now. It's all touchy-feely, it's all about feel, this fishing. Oh, there we go, there we go. It's a hit then. Oh, come on, come back, come back, come back, come back, come back, come back. Come on, you know you want it. Have it. Swine. It's a problem, a slight problem. I'm not, I'm not being a sort of like, all those angles and moans about stuff, but ideally you get that hit, you want to keep that lure in place. And kind of, there we go, there we go. Oh, oh you That was actually a case of, I was about to moan about the swell moving my lure around, but the swell was fishing my lure then for me and I got hit and missed like an absolute Egypt. Jeez. Oh, Henry, sometimes you can fish like a monkey. There are baboons in Africa with more fishing skill than me sometimes. I've come across these, these new gobster shads and I am beside myself with excitement about trying them for bass and specific situations, but they just look, I've got the smaller size one on, they look so ras, ugh, they look so rassy. You know, ras, without a doubt, my mate in the Isles of Silly years ago used to live bake, you know, kind of gobies, bloody for big ras. These are so kind of ras food like. And my first chuck was when I got hit. Second chuck, I missed it because I'm an Egypt. Come on. It's interesting that how that swell, when you're going tight, how that swell can almost kind of, you know, can work. You're not fishing a bass lure on the drop, letting the water work the lure. That swell's almost, when you come in tight, is lifting and is bumping the lure around. Come on, I know that fish will have it. Take me away. It is like fishing with shamaters. Christ, like a fish better than this when I was seven years old. How can you miss it? I mean, it's just not possible. Do you know what? That's why I missed it. It couldn't possibly be my fault. Okay, obviously, because I'm a bloke. But the wrasse has done what the wrasse loves to do, is bitten the tail off the lure. Yo, which makes me feel a lot better because that was some damn fine angling. It's not my fault. Fish bit the tail off. I missed it. Oh, I didn't miss it. The fish missed the lure. Oh. So, through no fault of my own, having lost uh, that fish, I've proved to myself the gobster shad works for ras. I mean, you know it's going to be, it's just the perfect, it's the perfect kind of goby imitation, or blenny, whatever you want to call them. But I'm going to put the Ned Salamander back on, 
because it's that weird kind of, you know, that weird material, I don't know what you call it. Um, quite sort of pernickety to rig and stuff, but it lasts and lasts and lasts and lasts. Just don't mix it with any other soft plastics, otherwise you end up with a, a sort of mess. Oh, that looks nice. You saw me rig up that 15 grams balls clip on lead earlier and I dropped a fish, I, a fish came off very quickly. So I know it works instead of the Texas rig, but I've got, I've got quite a bit of breeze here quite a, and a sort of building swell and pretty deep water. And if brass fishing is all about kind of touch and feel, I had to increase the weight on my rig to feel what's going on and I haven't got a heavier ball clip on lead than 15 grams. So I've actually put two, I think it's two 13 gram, you know, cone leads on, give me like 25, 26 grams. It's very heavy for ras fishing, but I've got that contact I need on the bottom. And it's the Texas rig which I know works. And touch wood, I, I shouldn't say it, but I haven't lost a set of gear yet. Yeah, that heavier weight you see is it's kind of not as subtle but I know it works because I've had I've had a bunch of fish on that Ned Salamander rigged on those from that heavy heavy Texas rig it works you go ras fishing I don't want to ruin your day but just think once Henry drag I might drag on but take the drag on your spinning wheel when you go ras fishing and wind it up solid. You should not, I don't believe, any ras that swims in our waters should be taking any line off you. So these people who say, oh, I cooked a ras and it ran 20 yards, sorry, rubbish. It shouldn't be running. Give them the gears. Don't give, what are ras trying to do? Get in the bottom all the time. Give them grief. Get them in, get them in green, nice and lively, and they go back really well. Rash should not be taking line. I've been leaving my special little hole alone for a while. I've got this deep, dark hole. I've been putting my lures right into it, right beneath me. I've been leaving that hole alone deliberately to come back and see the rash still in there. Oh, this rod is a machine. Oh. Yeah, I'm leaving my A hole alone and I'm going to go in my B hole. Go where I've got B on. Oh, I've got a fish on actually. Oh, such bad fishing. That is such bad fishing, Henry. I thought I'd a lump of weed. Oh, shamater hour today. God, this rod has got so much grunt. <laughs> oh, it's a nice fish, actually. Oh, it's a polo. Oh. It's not a bad pollock either. God, I didn't know pollock like salamanders. I was about to talk you through how rafts love to crash dive when they come in tight. But so do pollock. Calm down, fish. These rocks are a bit awkward. Look at that. It's taken my salamander. Look at that. Oh. 
that's lure fishing, that's Ireland, that's a whole lot. You just never quite know. Oh, that's a proper scrap as well. I'm going to put this back, I'm going to put this fish back and wait for that swell coming in now. I'm going to spear it back head first, okay? Oh, that was so cool. I come ras fishing and, well, this is obviously, this is, you look at it, this is, this is Pollock and ras ground, but bumping the bottom like that, jeez, I'll tell you, that's, um, that's pretty cool. That's a good scrap as well. I really, really enjoyed that. Then you get a nice little wound in the old mouth of the Pollock. Got those little sharp teeth and I went to unhook it and I want to hold it. I I don't want this fish to get damaged, so I don't mind holding it in the lip. You just get a little bit of cut like that. But, um, oh, I love it. Come on, my little hole. Don't let me down. That's probably my A hole, and that's my B hole over there. <laughs> this is childish, isn't it? But it is that is my A hole. <laughs> Stop it.